Hey, how's How it going? Oh, good, 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 good. So, like a Brady bunch, like happening right here. Brady, bunch. right? Da, 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 the Brady bunch. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> the Brady bunch. Welcome. <laughs> Super excited. Like Megan, you made my freaking day today. There is. How? Well, because there was we were doing a warm up in one of the hangouts, and you're like, um, "If you guys will just get out of my way, I'm here to talk anime." So, <laughs> was I was like, "Yes, hi, are you talking about me?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, at least I'm like, "What do I do?" I was like, "Just get out of her way. She's here to talk about anime, so you get out the way." <laughs> <They're> gonna- <laughs> Watch out! I'll run you over. <laughs> when she was like. John, I miss my John. I haven't seen. Uh, I was. I was like, I can't wait to see John. I haven't seen him I know, in months. Oh, I know, and and I have tea. I oh, have and tea. I have soda. Is that good? Yes, darling girl. Yes, we have, have a, uh, watermelon lemonade. That's, oh, that's and it's all right. All right. All right. Oh, right on. That Spider-Man Left. cup is legit. Yes. Oh, vodka. Yeah, <laughs> vodka. That's what's in there. That, that was the secret. Early in the day, but hey, never too, never too uh, early in the day never for that. Too early. Your ID. Right. Your ID is right. My ID is is somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Um, so who uh, who has not met, uh, or have all of you? I know John and Megan, obviously. Newton, have you met? I have not met John. Okay. I don't. Think, I don't think I met Newton, and I haven't met Damon until today. I met Newton. Like months and months ago, because Kyle was out and he asked me to fill in for him. I don't know if I had purple hair at that point, so I probably look completely different now. But it was like a brief moment in time. Okay. So hello, hello again. Yeah, I, re- I remember <laughs> directing, that. Directing fairy tale then. Yeah, yeah. Kyle was Kyle was out. He was like, "Can you come up here?" And I was like, "Yeah, I live five minutes away." I'm, like, I'm really close. It's fine. <laughs> Did, <laughs> didn't I tell you? Weren't, weren't you the one that I told you? Like, just give me a line reading. I'm totally cool. With yeah, that. so much quicker. <laughs> yeah, you were like, just just do it. And I was like, okay, great. <laughs> Because yeah. I never, because I never know who is like okay with that and who is like, no, do not give me a line. Read, for I'm an actor. No, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, oh, okay, great. Here, just do it like this. <laughs> just, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, do you do a bunch of directing then? Uh, I started assistant directing. I mean, probably a little before. My brain is still stuck in March when everything kind of stopped moving. Yeah, it's right. Weird that it's, it's weird that it's June. Um, but before that, I think I started last summer ish. You started kind of before a, me. Like assistant directing and I don't know when I, I started. I started like in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of st- we- I, di- I dipped my toes in and then around mm-hmm. the fall is when it all kind of started ramping up and then I started helping Caitlin and, and Kyle and then I last season. Sessions. I know. I miss going <laughs> right across the, the hall. hall and being like, Damon, hello. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm busy, Megan. My nighttime buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, sad days. Oh my gosh, sad days. We'll be back one day. <laughs> one of these days. Uh, directing? Hmm? Were you doing a bunch of directing? Me? Yeah. I did. Uh, I directed a lot of um, Kona Oto Tomare season two. Okay. Um, like I was Tia Ballard's assistant director, and I was one of the leads in the show. Um, so we, uh, I started with that. And then I, I did some other uh, assistant directing with other shows there. And then I was starting with A3 before the uh, quarantine. <laughs> so then what are you going to pick up where you left off in the directing chair when you now in uh, you're like, sure. We, we hope so. I don't know where anything's going anymore. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Well, Megan, you'll be happy to. Apparently, Daniel can totally tell that it's purple and not blue. <gasps> Yay! Yeah, my camera always makes it look blue, but yeah, I, I'm the same. I'm the same. Uh, da, 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 da. It's there's only five of us, right? Just this yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only five. I, I mean, technically, there's room for one more, but it's like uh, you know, as I, I have to become more of a parent than than a host. If there's like six. All right. Behave, children. Everyone behave. All right, John. You're, you're Alice on the Brady Bunch. You're in the middle, and we're the rest of the Brady Bunch. Yeah. 
Man, yeah. <laughs> I go back and forth with Alicia. She's like, I'm branding myself as Alice Rose. And I'm like, but Alice is an old white chick on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that says, you know, I'm brown. I, so I was like, are you going for that? Like, where did you, because um, I, I, know, I wonder, you know, when things go from one culture to the other, like um, in, in white, I guess you could say, Alice very like it doesn't get used very much as it was there was like a certain generation that used the name alice and then we really haven't seen like when was the last time someone named their kid alice so uh, uh stephanie meyer when she wrote twilight there you go <laughs> there you go there's is an that alice the character is alice yeah there's an alice but again mm -hmm. i mean she's a vampire and she's from the 1920s so i guess your point is proven I was like, Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I just I just outed myself as uh, the Twilight reader in front of a bunch yeah, of people. It it's it's fine. okay. I already <laughs> ordered the next Some, book that's coming out in August. Is <laughs> Look, somebody's got to do it. I can read. I can read the books. The movies. The movies are. Oh, they're so bad. They're great. <laughs> if nobody has done it, you have to watch the first movie. But watch it with the um the commentary with. Uh, Robert Pattinson because he just like disses on himself the whole commentary and That's it's so amazing. funny Good. it's amazing oh so the whole time he's like oh this is trash oh man yeah like, he trash. makes fun of he makes fun of himself the whole commentary it's hilarious it's like him and the director because back then yeah. when the first when the first movie came out it wasn't like a, a massive <laughs> thing so they were just like yeah let's just do this whatever and now yeah. it's hilarious. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> So would you say that watching commentary is like way better than just watching the Yes, I was always that kid. This is kind of what, okay, this is kind of related to voice acting, but, oh. um, or I'll, I'll make it related to voice acting. I love, I was always the kid that loved watching commentaries on things. I remember the first commentary I watched, I had like the Pokemon 4 movie where it's like yeah. Celebi and they like go back in mm -hmm. time and whatever. Yeah. And so they, I had that DVD and my parents got it for me. And I remember listening to the commentary and that was like the first time my brain clicked and I was like, Oh my God, like people do these voices. Cause they had the woman on who at the time it was the original cast at the time, but she was the woman who did the voice of Misty and Jesse at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, and she like did the voices in the commentary and I went, wait a minute. And so it was so, yeah, it was like the most, that's like when it all clicked. I was like, oh, people like talk. But then I forgot about it until I was in college. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I can do voice acting now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Rachel, Rachel is Jesse, isn't she? Rachel Lowe's? Um, she was, now it's Michelle hmm. Knox. Yeah, now it's Michelle. Michelle and, been, she's been doing it for 15 years. Something yeah, like the, that. yeah, it's been, it, it's crazy. She's I know, super right? sweet. She's I love crazy. Michelle. I love yeah, we uh, we hosted Tara Sands and Rachel Lillis um, at Anime Expo for autograph signing. So it was really cool to meet those ladies. Mm -hmm. All right, John, how did you start on this thing? Like, how on earth did you find your way into the booth? Uh, tell me about, were you on stage? A lot of people start out at theater. Well, I've, I've always been a stage uh, kid and a theater nerd since I was a kid. Yeah, elementary school, definitely. And I studied acting in school. And um, after I uh, studied in New York for a couple of years, I came home, decided what I wanted to do in the future, and I wanted to go to film school eventually. And since then, I've been a video editor for about as long as I've been a voice actor. And so that's my bread and butter. But on top of that, I started to do voice acting. And then in the late 90s, they used to have cattle call auditions at ADV Films in Houston. And they just used to, every couple of months, they needed actors. And so they would crowd the front room and you'd wait just like you're auditioning for a commercial. Yeah. And, um, and I auditioned for Matt Greenfield and got in some roles and, and it just took off from there. And then when the directors like you and they see stuff, they just keep, it just snowballs from there for a lot of folks. They don't do it that way anymore, but that's how I first got into it. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the casting calls, though, right? Mm -hmm. they, if a director likes you, you still, right? I feel like a lot of times today, they'll just call you and tell you, hey, you're in this thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, my hero was one of the first things I auditioned for in a really, lo really long time. Good. I've almost never auditioned for animes. People just kind of know, oh, that's a John Grimion voice. Bring him in. You know, it, it kind of depends. Which is what um, I like a lot about it because I don't get to do accents very often. Okay. 
and I talked to Colleen and I said, man, I really want to do an accent. Every now and then I get to do one. I got to do a French one in Food Wars and um, for the French chef Chappelle. And then I said, that'd be great to do again or an old man or something like that. But mostly it's just my voice or it's my voice slightly nasal or slightly gruff. And then I talked, with, I was at Anime Dallas and I kept hearing about everything about my hero left and right. And I said, you know what? I really want to find out more about this show. And I started to watch it and I started binging it. And I watched every episode. And it's one of the only animes that I've watched all the way through. And so I talked to Colleen. I emailed her. I said, you know, if there's ever, if there's ever characters coming up that, because yeah. there's so many characters coming to that show. So if there's anything I can, I can do, let me know. And she eventually sent me a, a, an email for, for Gentle. And it was like, this has never happened with an anime role before. I promise. <clears throat> it became like you auditioned for a big play you wanted to be in or a commercial. Like you, I really want to get this role. Yeah. And I didn't hear anything for about a week. And I started to get, I started to go, you know what? I don't think I got this thing. I, and it, it, about a weekend, I was actually like pacing the floor. Kind of going, I don't think I'm going to hear about this. And then I heard that they were doing, I was texting somebody, hey, did you audition? How long before they let you know? I was not worried about it. And so they had the premiere of Heroes Rising in L.A., Yes. About a week after I auditioned, and I said, "Okay, good. Maybe they're just too busy." Maybe yeah, I kept yeah. telling myself stuff. And then finally, I'm eating breakfast. It's like a week and a day after I auditioned, and I said, "Man, I didn't get this role. I'm just eating breakfast." And ding comes in a little email, and I'd read the first word. It's like I cast you as gentle, and I think my neighbors down the block heard me. Yes, I got this role. So I loved it. It's a it's my favorite role so far. I think it's it's yeah. taking the mantle. That's huge to say over something iconic as Hawkeye Mihawk that you that you say gentle is your. It's it's a clo Hawkeye's a close second, but uh, I think Gentle's uh, a lot more. He's more interesting to me. He's he's deeper and he's got a lot more vulnerability, and I I, I dig him a lot. Yeah, and then Damon, you, tell me, you said your experience is, is different. Share share. For my hero, specifically, or just Vio in general. Well, you you had a, a strong reaction. You're like, ah, oh, but I so. Oh, well, for for auditioning in general, uh, for I, I feel like Dallas because a lot of things are uh, in a simul dub uh, kind of method. For auditioning, auditioning is not as prevalent because they just don't have time. Um, yeah. Um, whereas um, Los Angeles, they typically uh, do more auditions. I work in both places, um, so that's that's more common out there um, because I think simul dubs aren't as big of a thing. Um, but for, uh, my hero, I did do an audition. Um, and I remember, uh, I had seen like bits and pieces of it. Um, but <laughs> I actually did a bit part for Colleen, um, in season two before, um, I was cast and this student, I remember I, I didn't know anything about the show and I, and I had to say the main character's name and it's, you know, Deku, you know, Midoriya, uh, Izuka Midoriya. And, um, I said Midoriya. <laughs> 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 I was like, she's like, have you seen the show? And I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. Um, so I, uh, yeah. So, but then, so and then I get these audition, uh, an audition request uh, to come and read for the season three uh, villains yeah. that were coming in. And, um, and I was like, I should probably w watch this show. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. So I binged the first two seasons um, in like two days. Um, and then I came in and I kind of, um, read for, I, I know I was reading for like mustard at first and then uh, a couple others and, and I was, there was like muscular and whoever, like big characters, and I was reading for like, um, and she, she was like, Oh, I'll just get these. And I was like, I, I, I want to, I would like to try. And cause I, I, I do, I have like a larger range i guess. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Damon's a chameleon. Don't even sell yourself short. I do things. <laughs> so, um, so I read for all the characters, and then I think so. I got the roles of both Mustard and Moonfish because I was able to show her my range. Yeah. Um, and then recently, actually, I just did within the past couple of weeks. I did um, the last episode of season four. I played High End. High End. Um, yeah. yeah, and he is uh, this the first Nomu, I believe that can talk and has like mm -hmm. any kind of intelligence um so yeah so colleen uh she had seen me in one piece stampede as douglas bullet um and well we acted off each other 
Um, and she was like, do something like that, but just more, more dumb. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> he, he like, he, he has a hard time connecting. Like he's just like starting to think, you know, the, the, the yeah. cogs are turning, but slowly. So, um, yeah, so we did that and that was really, that was really crazy. Uh, super fun. Lots of, lots of screaming. <laughs> I thought it was, it was great. Like branding wise that they put like both of your characters they just went ahead and like put them side by side in the print. They well, just they just happened. I don't know. They just knew. They just I, knew. Just knew. <laughs> With the fates were gonna bring you together. Um, that was that was like Moonfish is just so Gross. freaking creepy. Yes. Okay. Game. <laughs> like, is there is there anything that you have to do to get to that level of gross? Mm -mm. Like <laughs> no, I'm just there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just because he's you know mustard mustard is kind of like my normal range like it, it's just yeah. me but a little higher and i just i hate you ua students and then it's moonfish who's just hey, hey, this awesome. <laughs> you know like it's this awful like yeah bling. it's it's it's, it's I don't know. As he looks when his, all of his teeth are out you're like oh man that guy is so awful people. nightmare fuel right like yeah. i hate it <laughs> So Newton, what what um, what brings you out of Scrubs into the booth? Do you uh, do you still actively audition? Do you, uh, do people just call you if they need you? Like, what does that process look like for you? To try to figure out how to how to decide where you spend your time. Uh, they normally, uh, well, I think in the last probably three or four years, they call me. I kind of slipped under the radar when I was in school, and it yeah. was like a completely great thing in the way of like i would have been too frazzled yeah i think i did try to do a few auditions when i was in the beginning and they were terrible i think i may have been the only person that got worse at auditioning but they uh <laughs> I, I never even knew that i uh uh like what i was doing that's how confused i was and busy i was or how much stuff was taking up my mental space yeah i went in to do this and i thought i was just doing like a bit part because people usually will grab me like hey go do a few lines in that studio that studio and i was like cool and so when i did this one i thought it was going to be kind of like that and i didn't know and then i saw colleen uh probably a a good six months later she's like you got a lot of big stuff coming up and i'm like as who what which show <laughs> and then she told me i was like oh okay and then once i started when he kind of had his mental breakdown the character um i really got into it and i was like oh this is kind of a lot juicier than just coming in and saying a few lines and you know saying thank you and going and then I realized I didn't audition for that, and it made me feel good that Colleen had trusted me enough to, you know, say, hey, I know you're busy, but can you make time for this? And I was like, sweet. So yeah, that was pretty awesome. And it makes it, I think, probably everyone can agree, it makes it really worthwhile when you connect with a character like that, when you're like, oh, this is going to be fun. Not just like, you know difficult or weekly but like it's going to be exciting every time it's always going to be crazy and i can kind of do whatever i want they'll keep me in line but otherwise just go nuts so was that super cool in terms of like as you described your auditioning process in like trying to cram these different things in your life in the same space that sounded like twice, like on, like as you're talking about, <laughs> um, and I remember the last time we had you on in the fairy tale panel, thinking like, oh my gosh, this this guy is freaking gray. And then as you're talking now, like, oh man, he's so freaking. <laughs> like, do you ever feel like the people have just gotten to know you so well that they're like, I'm gonna need that part of Newton to come in and like be on? Did you identify with twice a lot? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not. I think in a lot of times, and I think there'll be a lot of directors that agree, I am a one-trick pony for the most part, but I'm fine with that. I'm glad to have one trick. That's totally right? great. Yes. But this one, I think I think as it, it moved on, I don't know, maybe even there's a couple of directors that are like, let's see what else you can do. What can we stretch you out on? Because yeah. I'm always there to work. Like I definitely am ready to work and go – 
at it 150 percent i just need to be batted in the direction you want me to go crazy in so i, I don't know I, I guess i've played more like buttholes and i have great people so maybe that kind of has some kind of attractiveness <laughs> to it i'm never the romantic interest and i wish i was well i guess gray that's, that's great to have in your resume you know buttholes on your resume yeah <laughs> And I'm pretty sure Circle. you have Tuvia. You're definitely the love interest in fairy tale. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of all over too. But it's a really fun role to do because we're differentiating again, like we were talking about, between three different characters, and we literally have to give each one a name and say which one is this from line to line almost. I mean, we, some you can definitely tell, but you'll be halfway in through the line, and the last two lines are going to be a different character and then mix it and you're going to be both of them at the same time so i don't know what i'm doing i just like change tone and like yeah. Yeah. word structure and that somehow works and did you see twice as as deadpool was that like um did you check out the character design before you um or when he came up on screen as you're as you're in the booth what was your experience in seeing him visually um I try to do everything like in the booth. I'm like one of those people that I'm not very good at thinking more about something beforehand or even during really. I try to, I'm more of uh, try to work on mechanics, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. So if I do too much in like research or anything like that, I'll end up sabotaging myself yeah. and it won't be, it won't be great. So it's kind of good. I've always kind of, just go in and see what it is and try to go off the, you know, like that. Anytime I prepare, I feel like I never got the role. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to keep it fresh every time, um, which that sabotages you sometimes too. But yeah, it seems to. So I didn't do any kind of research or anything. I let, cool. I just kind of turn off and listen to Colleen and she, she kind of guided me through. Megan, what was your, how did you get into this? What is your origin story? Ooh, I sound like a superhero. Um, I guess. Uh, you're right. <laughs> um, so my whole like origin, I guess, I, it was like half luck, half talent, half the stars aligned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I was in college. I went to LSU and uh, they, um, there's a big, I, I have a degree in music ed. Fun fact. Do I teach now? No, <laughs> not <laughs> one bit. Um, but while we were there, uh, I'm from Dallas. I was born and raised here, despite what my Wikipedia says. Um, they, uh, <laughs> uh, I went to LSU. There's a music school there. And a lot of people from Dallas or the Dallas area went to this music school. Um, and while I was there, uh, I, I met a girl. She was actually from Arlington. And she, um, she doesn't do like a lot for Funimation nowadays, like she kind of moved and like did different things with her life, which is totally normal. Um, but uh, she was so nice and uh, basically helped me connect and plug into kind of the scene, I guess you could say. And um, it allowed me to, you know, meet people and, and, and then I got called to do an open audition when they, it was probably, I think one of the last ones they did because, because then a few years ago, I remember this, we did another open audition right after Darling and the Franks was wrapping up. Um, Cause I remember who was like running the call. And, um, and I remember I was like, oh man, when was the last uh, open audition they did? And they were like, oh, you know, the one you did. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Um, so, you know, you know, that was just the timing and everything lining up. And then of course I, I, they, they, I guess I was good enough uh, because they called me back and started having me audition for things because we weren't simul dubbing at that point. So there were a lot more auditions yeah. then than there are now. And um, they've just kept calling me and I'm like, thanks. And then, you know, since then I also have, have you know, uh, worked towards bettering myself as an actor. Um, I, I've, I've built up my skill set a lot more and sometimes I, I go back and I see clips of like old stuff or the first things I was in. And I'm just like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why? Like, I remember we did uh, a few seasons ago. They had after like, 
Well, they did a Day to Live season three, which was weird because Day to Live was one of the first things I did. Uh, and I was in the second season of that. And then like four years later, they're like, great, now you get to do this again. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, it's been four years. And then they did the same thing that season with Sinron Kagra, which was legitimately the first named role that I had a huge chunk of things to voice. Um, and so then I got to do that again. And that was crazy because they were like, okay, here's a reference for you. And they had like pulled my voice from like four yeah. or five years ago. And I was like, yeah. oh, man, stop. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And I was like, oh God, how would it? And I, I thought to myself, I was like, how did I talk that high pitched for eight hours a day? Uh, <laughs> that was ridiculous. Ah. Um, cause I remember I had to do a, that was fun. The first season of Center on Progress, I had to do like a whole day session to finish up the entire season because I had to go back to college and they were like, well, we need you to finish. And I was like, okay, I'll suck it up and I'll just do it. And I yeah. did it. I don't think I could do that now, but I sure powered through and did it then. Uh <laughs> and John, did you, you said you, uh, commercial work. Yes. Do you do a ton of commercial work? No, I've got, I've got a, I've got a couple of commercials on TV right now. There's a there's a there's a brain supplement <laughs> called Prevagen that is on the air, and they show it on like news shows and stuff like that. I've got um, uh, I've got a couple of things out there on TV, but not a lot. It's my, my work's mostly been in corporate video and in anime, you know. Okay, so tell me about your your corporate stuff. Uh, every now and then, I hear somebody talk about like instructional videos and things like right. How does that happen? How tell me about that process of Well, you know, the way it's happened to me, luckily enough has been that I've I've been since I've been a video editor, Houston has is mostly corporate video work. And so whether it's an oil and gas company or training yeah. videos or stuff like that, I'm usually the one working on it. So I'm hear my voice and go, "Do you do voice work?" and I say, "Yeah." And my 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 boss would say, "Hey, let's do a package deal. We'll let John do the voiceover and the editing, and then you don't have to pay for an extra voice actor. I get something out of it, but it's, but the client doesn't have to pay separately for, and it's all in house. And since, since I'm the editor and I would know the video really well, yeah, I would know better a feel of what they wanted in the voice. And you know, the director working with them, the client for a while. So that just happened to work out and that fed to more voice work. Okay. So the, the two kind of work together and also Working in video also helps me um, be better in the anime booth. Uh, for me, anyway, it's it's it helps that I work in video so that I don't have to think as much. Perhaps if I didn't work in video, it might be tougher for me to match flaps the same way or to think about timing the same way, unless you have the beeps and stuff like that. Yep. And especially since we've had this situation with COVID. Three episodes of, of My Hero, of the six that I did, were in Fort Worth, and then it blew up, and then we were all in our apartments and houses yeah. recording yeah. the next three episodes. And so not only was that really heavy emotionally, but you also had to be your own engineer. Yeah. I worked with the engineers at Funimation, and they they I said, well, here's my video editing software. Let's... So they would send me materials. I would line them up, and I would use my software to record the lines for gentle while I was watching it on my laptop in real time across the closet. of So you're spinning a lot more plates. But I think for me, being a video editor helped a lot with being able to, to make that work and not lose sight, not be in the zone as the character, um, if that makes any sense. No, it totally does. And I, I feel like- That was tougher, that was tougher to do. Probably one of the things I hear more than I want to is this idea of like people think that the voice, the anime voice actor's life looks like X, Y, Z. But then, you know, here on the panel, we're talking about, right. Damon, Damon just went from the center of the country to the coast, right. John's right. like in, in his closet editing videos for oil and gas companies, new, new, new nurse, right. Megan's like finishing up school. Like there just isn't one path to, I think the, the, the worst kept secret in anime is that there isn't one way into this field. And the more like tools in your Swiss army knife, the more like the, the more your phone is going to ring. Is that a fair? Oh sure. oh, sure. Yeah. The better you are at anything, the better you are at all things. Yeah. The more, yeah. The more, the, I'm sure that I'm sure that Damon and Megan are better actors for having been directors and vice oh. versa. I, yeah, and and to, to to piggyback off of it, I mean, I have a background in music, and 
Yeah, I, uh, I remember when I started, because I was always a choir kid and not a theater kid, which sounds so awful. I always tell people, do as I say, not as I do. You want to act, please take acting lessons. <laughs> I was very lucky. Um, <laughs> right. But um, but yeah, having, I remember very early on, I think Jerry Jewell told me, he was like, what do you do? And <laughs> I was like, I'm at school for music right now. And he was like, oh, you're a musician. And I was like, yeah, why? And he was like, oh, because you have really good timing in getting things to fit right. And he was like, it's because you're a musician. And I was like, ah, got Very. it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and also, and, and part of the reason I started assistant directing is because um, of music too. I um, Because I, I know music, I know uh, Brina and Dawn were working on music for all the simul dubs and doing the music directing. So anytime there's like a song in a show and Dawn was like, hey, I'm gonna be gone this week. Can you, um, and Brina can't do it because she has a baby. Uh, so. Could you, I trust you because I know, because I went to, I went to middle school and high school with Dawn. Uh, so we know each other well. Um, and she was like, I trust you. Could you come in and do this music directing for me? And I was like, yes. So I got to kind of start directing through music directing, which then led to Caitlin and, and all the other directors being like, hey, can you fill in for us for these days? And then it became more of a regular thing. So yeah, things just like, they build and they build and they build. It yeah. just happens. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, there is no, there is no one path, and it's so hard to tell people. Like, you can give people all the advice in the world, but there's no like magic secret of like how to start working at Funimation or how to start working at any place that makes anime or any voiceover, anything. Like, just you have to just kind of do it yourself. Whether that's I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna do a bunch of indie projects and audition, or I'm gonna move to this city and I'm gonna do, it's like everyone has, has different timing and different ways to get there. And there's no, nobody has the exact same story. It's kind of crazy. Well, and I feel like education is such a huge part of, uh, mm -hmm. I think everyone hopes or wishes or thought that there would be like a shortcut, but how, how many people, yeah, I think it was like thought zero percent. So what, does everyone have a degree? I have no degree. Tell me. So, on the yes, Megan, you said point. Yeah, I have, a, I have a degree in music education, K through 12. And then John, your degree? Uh, I've got a degree in RTF, radio, TV, film from UT Film School. Okay, Newton, your degree? Yeah. <laughs> been still for 20 years. You don't even want to sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. The degree in no, I have one, and I'm going for more. That's why I was piggybacking on what John said. I used to work in video two in New York, and oh wow, that's Very how cool. I kind of started doing voiceover. Is because I would be in the editing booth, and I would just mark the spots, and I'd be like, "Let's not do any. Let's not bring anybody in yet. Let them hear it with my voice, and then it'll play like, oh, I marked it. No big deal.' No, like really? Well, wait a minute. Can we just? I'm like, oh me? Oh, you, I'm you terrible. Well, yeah, but a lot, a lot, a lot of my clients, I would do that too. I would rough, I would rough a voiceover in myself. Yeah, and they would, they would hear it and go, "Oh, we'll just use you." And I'll go, uh, "And you know, the, yeah, oh, we just oh, want to." Oh, you got a great voice. We want to use you. No, I have an agent. Oh man, they just went, no. You, you gotta. That happens a lot. That is awesome. And then David, mm -hmm. you said yours was a super different path. How did you? Okay. How did you <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, it's been kind of a crazy one for me because I started, you know, I grew up as a fan of like a lot of this stuff, like anime and video games. And I was just like, oh, this is really cool. You know, yeah. I grew up watching, you know, Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and, and stuff. Um, so, you know, when I was in high school, I started, you know, kind of realizing like, hey, that's a thing people do. Like people yeah. like do the voices for that kind of stuff. So I started taking you know like trying to do acting training and and practicing a lot on my own and self-research um just for the number of i started what was it like 2008 <laughs> um and i kind of kept going and i started doing indie projects like on just online because i lived like not anywhere where there was a market sure um so i started doing like small projects on my own um and then in 2000 no, so 2015 i started working in new york um a little bit i worked on finally enough pokemon there a little bit and uh some other small anime titles um and 
it's just kind of cutting my teeth up there. And then I decided, I was like, hey, I want to do more things like this. So I'm going to try a different market. So I moved to Dallas um, in 2016. And uh, yeah, and I started, the first thing I booked there was, um, I was actually at the studio just visiting, like for the first time, I wasn't actually there, I was with my friend. And I'm just kind of checking it out. And I had sent my materials in uh, before I had moved and people had kind of heard my demo. And um, and then Joel McDonald was holding auditions for One Piece Film Gold. Yeah. He's like, can you, can you read for this? And I was like, okay. And then I booked it. And that was my first thing there. And it just kind of has gone from there. Very cool. Um, John, I feel like Let's, I'm going to, I'm going to share and you can tell me, I, I'm always excited when I, I was watching television back before the zombie apocalypse started and uh, commercials were right. That like people had a reason to watch live TV. Um, I saw the state farm commercial pop up and I was like, wait, did Chris Paul just say Miley? And I rewind it. I'm like, Chris Paul just freaking said, Hey Miley, that's freaking Miley Flanagan from Naruto. Is that right. you about to walk up in this scene, John? Are you the pharmacist? That's, that's not, I'm not the pharmacist, but I'm the voiceover on the commercial. So if I- Mild memory loss related to aging. Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory- That is totally freaking- <laughs> yeah. I, rem I remember seeing, uh, <clears throat> her name? Uh, what, I'm bad at, not terrible at names. Miss Queen Naruto, as I call her. Miley um, Flanagan. Yes, I remember seeing those commercials and going, "Oh my God, that's uh, what's what's her name?" And my husband, who doesn't watch anime, was like, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, "She's like, she's like Naruto, man." She's like and, Naruto, man. And he was just like, "Cool, I guess." Like, I was like, "I love her." How awesome is that? Like, I found that I was like, and like, what got me was he literally was like, "Hey, Miley," like he uses her real name. She's just putting herself in a commercial. Yeah. I That's think it's so great. funny. I, yeah. I love it. So uh, you've done your research. I do. I I try to. I I feel like I'd be a terrible panel host if I knew nothing about uh, anybody or the industry. Oh, there you go. Uh, oh, oh, can I piggyback off of what Damon said earlier? Because you were like, I used to be a fan, and I was like, Yeah, me too. And <laughs> it's yeah. so. I was like, me too. Um. And it's so it's so weird because um, now I think all the people that are like really getting into voiceover, like it, it wasn't really a thing beforehand when people were like, I want to be a voice actor. But now it is now that conventions are more of a thing and it's more of like a front and center kind of it's profession. Uh, yeah. yeah. And and you can see the people doing it. They're all over social media and it's a fun like community. <laughs> but it's so weird. Like like whenever I got to go in and help Kyle. um and work with Newt and all that stuff. It was like, I thought about it when I went home later and I was like, this is the most bizarre timeline that I'm living right now. Because I was like, I, in college, like I literally would like sit there and talk about fairy tale with my friends. And then here I am sitting here directing <laughs> it. <laughs> like, yeah. what a bizarre timeline this is. Or like, like I, <laughs> I always tell the story. I accidentally called Jerry Jewel old um, on accident. Why would you do that? Oh no, it's rude. I didn't mean to. I'm a very awkward human being. Um, <laughs> but the very first time again, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm literally the worst. But Jerry is so nice. Uh, he's very dry humor person. Very, okay. very dry. Yes. Um, I remember one of the very first things I ever did was with Jerry, and I was trying to make small talk after one of our sessions. I was like. Oh yeah, I watched Fruits Basket one time when I was in middle school, and he was like, "Cool, my kids are in middle school." And you're like, "Me <laughs> too." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," and he was like, "It's fine." <laughs> I was like, I'm just trying to make kids with your fun. Yeah, <laughs> it was so bad, and I always tell that story because it's so funny now. And he's he's a good sport, and he's yeah. he just gave me crap about it. It's okay. fine. <laughs> I, I I was on a on a meeting on a brand marketing meeting with Lauren Landa last night, John, and and I said something. And she's like, "Wait, what? How how old are you?" I was like, "Oh, I'm way older than you think I am. I can tell you that." Uh, yeah. The fact that I have five kids usually gives away like that I'm much older than I, if it wasn't for this beard, 
Like I would be lucky that people would give me credit out of my out of my twenties. Uh, yeah. I wow. have two teenagers, so I'm definitely way older. Oh, than man. Them. Hipster yeah. beer for the win. Yeah. And then thankfully, I guess there's a little gray in there that'll add, a, add give me credit for a few years. So. <laughs> right uh, my wife comes from Eastern North Carolina, so there there are a lot of full. You know what I mean? Like I have to make sure that she feels like she took home an Eastern North Carolina man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, let down the family. You know, I feel like there's expectations that that she should. Uh, yeah. She got the opposite of a farmer. That's for sure. I love concrete and steel. Um, you guys, okay. So California, did you did you go uh, more urban or did you just go straight downtown, Dave, when you moved? Oh, <laughs> so uh, surprise! <laughs> I moved. Um, I haven't told these guys yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, keeping um, secrets now, are we? <laughs> great. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, it's in North Hollywood. Okay. Oh wow. Um, but it's so so further out of out of downtown. Then are you? Do you oh, like yeah. steel? Like, are you a city guy? Do you do you love city? The cityscape? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Uh, well, then you picked a beautiful area. Have you had a chance no. to poke around yet? No. <laughs> no, it's, it's stay inside, man. It's COVID out there for sure. In yeah. California, is I feel like. <laughs> Texas is one of those states where uh, I don't think they care, or at least a giant percentage of the population doesn't care. John, uh, John and Megan and Newton, do you, do you feel like there is just so much freedom floating around the air in Texas that people are like, F masks, F this, F that? It, that's that's really hard to say. I mean, uh, unfortunately, Texas's economy, and especially Houston's economy, is so dependent on oil and on gas and people aren't driving around. And so our economy is gonna be hurting uh, a lot more and lagging behind other economies, even when we come out of this thing. Yeah. So what I, and, and I've got some friends who run a theater and they have a cabaret theater and they were trying to reopen really soon and get back there and we talked about it. And, and one of the things that I realized and one of the things I always try to keep in mind is that I'm really lucky right now. I work out of my house, I can, my skills are kind of portable. I can edit at home, I can do voiceover from home. I am not in your shoes. I'm not in the position of people who have to reopen or they're gonna lose their restaurant. They're gonna lose their bar. They're gonna lose their theater. Um, I'm not in their shoes. So I don't, feel it's, I don't feel like it's really for me to say, here's what you guys ought to do. I know how I feel about it in terms of safety, but that's just my personal uh, feeling about it. But if I was running something it, we, it, you know like if you put two things on a scale what's more important it's easy for people to say if i don't reopen i'm going to lose this place it's a fact yeah but if i reopen it's maybe that people will get sick so they put the maybe versus definite yeah it's it's, it's an impossible choice for people to have to make i don't envy anybody in that position no it's it's, it's, freaking it's a really tough decision to make but I that's one of the first questions we ask when somebody comes into the hangout is like, Hey, do you, do you have the ability to work? And I feel like I, I celebrate if, if they say they've been able to work, then it's huge. Um, yeah. Like I, I took some super, super drastic action during the time to make sure that like I got five freaking kids, man. And you know, the Wells Fargo is only going to be so accommodating to miss my mortgage so many months. Like, you know, like I'm only so comfortable having my my family be on food stamps for so long. You know, like at a certain point, just as a person, you're like, I I don't want to be dependent upon. I don't want to be reliant upon. So, um, Megan, do you do you have a sense of like what it's been like to be able to? Because I feel like there was a week there. But they're like, it's all over. There was no direct. <laughs> Everything's burning to the ground. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, after that, it was like, they're like, no, we need you to write all these shows. We need, we need all the directors. We need like, 
Well, I will say, like, again, I know I'm also in a position where I'm really lucky. And my husband also, he his skills are also portable. He's an engineer and they are able to work from home. So he he goes out. He's the he's the he's the tribute, the he's the tribute of the household uh, that goes out and, <laughs> that goes out and fetches the the, the sustenance and the That's food. The food, the sustenance. <laughs> yeah, so he's the he's the chosen one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so like we're, we're we always we, yeah, bring me food, husband. Um, he always is is so awesome. But we're in this position, and we always talk about it how. <laughs> Man, like we're we're really lucky where both of our jobs, um, I can I can record from home. I'm not directing now because again, I'm not I'm not able to right. do anything. Right. And right. There, right. and there's just playing. I think everyone's just playing catch up in that regard right now. Yeah. But but um, but yeah. So we're just really lucky and and that we don't really have to go out as much and we don't have to put ourselves out there as much. Um, other than let's go get some food. I'm hungry, you know, yeah. but we don't like, we don't like go out and sit around at a restaurant because I'm too paranoid for that. <laughs> oh God, no, no restaurants. No I'm gym. So, I haven't been to the gym in like months. I'm, I'm so paranoid. I'm, I, I, very, I, I was like, I'd rather be paranoid and labeled as a crazy person than die. <laughs> well, you know, it's, really tough. it's really tough with recording booths because, because it's uh, apparently it's all about these days the air you breathe in an enclosed space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if somebody, if somebody, uh, it's not about just what's on a surface either. You don't have to touch the surfaces. You can wash your hands. It's what's still floating around in the air. Airborne. So yeah. If you, record, if you record anime and you yell for two hours, I'm not going to go into a booth right after you're gone. Yeah. I'm going to breathe in your air. Right. So you can stagger yeah, it out. Right. You got to wait. Or I can say, Hey, I'll go into the recording booth this morning to do a commercial. I did a few weeks ago, but I said, I want to be there the first thing in the morning. If you can manage it. So oh, make sure, yeah. make sure nobody's in discussion. Yeah. 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 We, or we, I think we, that's the only way to do it. I don't think there's yeah. a way to like make it into a full day's worth of recording. No, I, think, really. I think remote recordings are still going to be prevalent for a long time. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I don't see the industry. To be honest, I think what we learned in our economy is how much can be done without all the waste. I feel like, in terms mm -hmm. of consumption of fossil fuels, which unfortunately, John, for your area, for North Dakota, for Montana, for huge swaths of California where they're drilling, like, like yeah. it will not be the like structural unemployment is going to remain high. Like we just all found out that half of us can work from home. And I think it's going to impact mm -hmm. what the future looks like. Newton in the hospital, I remember seeing so much being like done outside. Is there, was there one process when this all first started and then like, as people got a handle on what it would look like and like, have you guys moved the hospital back inside the hospital or like, what does the hospital environment look like these days? Um, well, they still have the, they have the tent cause you're right. They didn't know what was going to happen. It yeah. was started out as complete controlled chaos, but chaos yeah. nonetheless. And they still set up, uh, you know, so that they were able to do some triaging if they had to do it in the parking lots and stuff and tried to be as prepared as they possibly could. Uh, there's still a lot of things. It did change the way that everything's done in that, you know, it's hard to say, well, you can't see your family while you're in the hospital. Yeah. At the same time, it's hard to say, sure, you can come see your family, whether, you know, it's like, it's such a gamble. And I think it's like a lot with John said, um, it's bad, but then I look at it uh, on another aspect. I'm like, well, the economy is completely collapsing in these areas and I don't want that either. Yep. But, you know, it's like, a, it, it's kind of a, I think it's a positive thing in that everybody is putting thought into it and they're making a decision, whether it's the one that I agree with Yes, it's kind of nice to see that people are like, well, this is the decision I have to make. And you see this independence, people working from home, people finding new ways to to do things and be more control of their life. And I'm all for that. So I think that's great. Yeah, Damon. Uh, but, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Damon, you have been extremely active on social media. And for good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I. And to Newton, I appreciate that thought because I am being a person of intention 
I think uh, not enough of us gave a big enough weight to. And then yeah. David, we're seeing like, if you're not thinking through and you're just consuming and you're not participating in the decision-making process, like we've let some really stupid things happen for a really yeah. long time. Like what, what is your, your thought process about America waking up at this point? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that it's, you know, really unfortunate that the, this, it had to come to this breaking point because this has been an issue for a very long time um, within, um, you know, for, for equality, for black, for black lives matter, for LGBT um, and the discrimination and all of that has been just running rampant for two and it's 2020. So I didn't, I didn't think it was, I, I feel bad because I, have not we have not done enough as a collective me right. others i didn't realize how bad it was still now um and i think that if we just start i feel like for some people it's almost like a fad it's like yeah speak up about the matter but then they're gonna like stop talking about it as soon as it's not in the, right. the highlight of the media right and that's what can't happen this time I feel like if if any progress is going to get done, this needs to continue to be fought and ad advocated for. I, I feel like Newton's point of, so like there was a giant reset. We were just literally all told to go home and like yeah. just go home and then think about what you've done. And then Newton's point about like, we each have to decide like, am I leaving my house? When I do, what is it gonna look like? Am I gonna wear, am I not gonna wear? Am I gonna, where am I gonna go? What like? We we're thinking about things in 2020 that have been on autopilot for far freaking too long. And then we have like a once in a lifetime chance. John, have you, have you experienced that in your circle? Like for the first time we're asking ourselves questions that literally we didn't even consider eight weeks ago, nine weeks ago. A lot of things that we've taken for granted. Certainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, I think that's, <clears throat> that's really come to the fore. What do you, what do you take? A friend of mine said it really well, and I think if I look for it, I can probably find it. But hold on a second, I'll look for this. Do it because it's pretty, it's pretty cool, actually. Hang on. Well, while, while he while he looks for that, I yeah, think yeah, a good point right. is I think a good point is you know for everything we're going through, whether it's COVID or Black Lives Matter and LGBTQ and everything, it, and I think we as I know for me, I've shifted my th way of thinking a lot over the last couple weeks and months, and um, I've started thinking of it as not like it's more of a new normal because it needs to be thought of as a normal, you know, like, yeah, you can post and be active while all, while all this is going on. Um, but instead of, you know, you can also go back to posting what you were posting before. But for me personally, you know, with Black Lives Matter, I want to stay active and I want to make sure I stay active because that's something I personally <laughs> decided that I want to do. Yeah. And, instead of saying, you know, oh, well, now I'm going to go back to posting about the anime I'm in. Well, yeah, I can do that. But I also need to not stop doing this other new normal thing that is in my life. It's, a, it's so instead of thinking like, well, this is a thing that I, I'm going to do right now. Well, make it a new a new normal for new yourself. Normal, yeah. And so and I think that's important. That's here's, what my, here's what my friend posted. I don't know where she got it, but she posted it. She said, COVID-19 woke you up to taking care of your health. Shelter in place woke you up to appreciating the life you have. The recession woke you up to the importance of saving your money. Black Lives Matter movement woke you up to the power of taking action. You're awake now, and it will take a conscious decision and intentional work to stay awake. Stay awake. Don't let yourself get rocked back to sleep. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, pretty cool. it's a pretty cool way to say all that stuff. Yeah, that's pretty, I, pretty good. I, and I... I don't know what the ultimate decision is. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what, if I'm going to risk my life for one thing at this point, it's voting in November. Uh, I am extremely uncomfortable with the idea of putting my vote in a box and I don't know where that box goes. And I don't know who goes to pick up. Like, I'm sorry, but how many times does Florida have to happen for us as Americans to question the electoral process? The, you know, like you should, you shouldn't have to recount votes. Like, how is that a thing? How How is, oh, my vote didn't get, like, I, I am very, very concerned in 2020 that we're going to legitimately be able to vote. And I, I think that 
man, I, I know thoughts on. I'm I'm scared out of my mind, you guys, of seeing these po- these pictures on Twitter of people encouraging mail-in voting. Like, where where's the safety? Where's the protection? Where's the Illuminati? Like, I don't know. Thought, thoughts on whether or not I just went off the deep end on that. Well, let's see. We've got six minutes left here. I'm not sure we can get all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, but yeah, that, no, I, I hear you. It's it's it's. That's a crazy time. It's crazy. Yeah. It's it's one of those things that we're just, we're not going to know what it looks like until we get there. Cause I feel like that's the theme of 2020 is just, we'll we'll see when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I appreciate John, the words of your friend. I I pray that we all do everything that we can to stay awake. Um, You know, Damon mentioned this idea of not being a fad. I, I can't stress that enough. Like, Caring about the lives of other people cannot be a fad anymore. Like if if anything, like Newton, like let's think about the things that we like. <clears throat> superbugs have existed in hospitals for a long. Like the worst infections you could get were from a hospital for a really long time. And I feel like as a society, going through a drive-through, like we gave such little thought to how gross we all were. Um, and I feel like at this point we're kind of awake and that we should just keep thinking about how to do things differently and then how to do things better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Steve, I'm a, I've been a germaphobe much longer than I've been a RN. So we- I see it. I see it building up everywhere at all times. I don't know. I think that's why I like it because to hear you speaking with passion and everyone you can tell that each one of us have like ideas and thoughts about it and just to see that activating inside you and being sort of politically woken up is it's a fascinating thing to see and i really i i don't know i've seen a lot of crazy things but i think this is like the time that it's actually going to do something it's going yeah, you know I mean, it already I, is but like I'm, something a little more permanent yeah, I'm, I'm reading a lot of articles. If it makes, anybody, makes it any better, I've read a lot of articles with the headline of, you know, this time feels different. Uh, we've seen a lot of this, but this time feels like it's like it's having an impact. I think Brian Cranston was on TV the other night. He said something like, you have to go through a breakdown to have a breakthrough. And it sounds like a soundbite, but there's some truth in it that um, I, I see and hear a lot of people saying, it has to get really, really bad, unfortunately, for people like an unprecedented level for people to say, oh, OK, we really can't do that again. So if, if there's another pandemic in the future or an outbreak somewhere, people are going to go, oh, no, 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 no. Because last time, you know, before COVID, SARS got stopped, MERS got stopped, Ebola got stopped. This yeah. did not. So the fact that it didn't is horrible. But that may be the thing it takes to get people to say there has to be a change that's permanent. Yeah, I mean, hey, hopefully that Damon, is. Damon and Megan, how do I get on y'all's little chat thing that you're doing with each other? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, you guys both have these like very uh, innocent, cute smiles where you're like, uh, yeah. man, I don't know. We, we communicate <laughs> telepathically. We, we give each other. That's, awesome. awesome. like right That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I was like, I want to see what they're chatting. Get Let me in on it. Man. Uh, smile. Anyone that wants me to share contact information with anyone else, you guys let me know. I always blind CC everybody. I don't want to like blankly give out people's contact info, but um, so it is about that time. Uh, I want to thank all the fans, everybody for joining in. Um, as you probably could tell, if it wasn't apparent, if you haven't been before, um, we we want to we appreciate chat and we appreciate everyone's any any kind of well-meaning intentioned thoughtful comments we put up on screen, but the questions only get answered in VIP. To qualify for VIP, all you have to do is get anything from Damon, John, Megan, Newton, support any of the actors that you think are amazing, support all the actors, uh, whatever is is within your your means and where you're at in your life right now. Um, But we will work to get, I already see some things that have come in, uh, have, have, uh, no fear. We will work all the hangouts in that have been booked during this time. And then we're going to have a break about 30 minutes before we go to VIP. So just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Uh, we have been incredibly blessed to find out how uh, important this community, the anime community has been to you during this time. And we uh, hope that learning about everybody and kind of really 
looking behind the curtain and getting an idea of how this all happens and how people start in the industry and what makes John and Megan and Damon and Newton pit, um, tick. I hope that's super helpful. Uh, it definitely is for me. I appreciate you guys spending your time with us. Uh, parting shots, things that you want to lift up, um, places you want me to take on the internet. I have this fancy technology and I can point my internet browser anywhere that you want. Damon, is there something as we, as we leave that you want me to lift up uh, for everybody to take a look at? Something that's important to you, project that you're working on, cause that you're champion. Oh gosh, man. Um, I mean, I can't think of anything to put up right this second. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, I, I don't. I don't really have a good, a good answer right now. Sorry. You're, you're fine. Uh, feel free as we circle around. If there's something you want me to circle uh, back, yeah. <laughs> John, thing, things that you want to point attention to, project that you're working on causes. You know, I just want to tell everybody thanks for being here today. I uh, hope we can see you once in the in the panel later and then maybe some hangouts, but stay healthy. Even if we don't see you, stay healthy, stay safe. Uh, this will this too shall pass. And I, I hope we uh, um, I hope I look forward to the day where we can all be laughing about this in the future and all be seeing each other at the convention and having a great time together. That's really my message right yeah. now. Megan? Uh, yeah, kind of the same thing. Um, I always tell people, I, I love to chat with people on Twitter. If you hit me up on Twitter, um, I love chatting with people. But yeah, stay safe. Um, try to do as many of these online things as possible and tell the people that are doing these online conventions and things like that. Tell them you like it, tell them you support it because, you know, we just, for me, I know that I just, yeah, there's my Twitter page. Go follow it. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so, um, but yeah, like tell people you love these online conventions and because it, it really is a, a great way to, for us to connect. Because I know I, I've missed, you know, seeing people face to face and, you know, seeing some of you guys face to face through the one on ones and, you know, talking to you guys later in the VIP is going to be super, super fun. Um, and I can't wait. And I've been really excited for today for a long time. So yeah, just tell people you, you love these and you support these online conventions because they're really going to be our, 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 our way of connecting for yep. the next, whoever yep. knows how long. Right on. Yep. Yeah. Newton. Everything she just said. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> okay. Well then since, since it's everything, we'll go ahead and we'll type in the new yeah. Yeah, there you go. Rats? Oh, yeah. Rats? Oh, nice I do glasses. like the glasses. Yeah. Very the, cool. Thank you. I like the rainbow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then, Damon, what do you got? I mean, I just want to add to to all that. I mean, I'm echoing their everybody's you know acknowledgement for staying safe and and staying healthy. And I really do think that just making sure you connect to your peers and your friends and loved ones right now is super super important. Um, you know trying to do these online conventions is a really fun way to connect with everyone right now when we won't know when we're going to be able to do this again. Um, you know, and yeah, there's, oh, there's my Twitter. <laughs> um, go follow me there. I'll probably be trying to do more of these as we move forward. Um, and it was really lovely talking to with, with you guys earlier on the one-on-ones that you can, you know, do the, the questions and stuff on the VIP chat next. And yeah, and I love you guys. And this is, you know, super rad to do right now. And I thank you guys for having us on here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been a pleasure. We, we've been excited that, uh, John, you didn't ask, but uh, I went ahead anyway. So there is John where you can find him on the interweb. Uh, it's, wow. it's awesome. I love getting to know new people. Um, we had a ton of people. The only reason this happened uh, is because people like Colin Clickenbeard and Christopher Wakeham and Leah Clark and Bryce Pappenbrook were like, Brad, you're screwed. What can we do? Uh, and, and together we came up with this idea and we had no idea how much people would love getting to see people again. And so it's been a huge blessing for us to be able to connect people. So um, I'm excited for VIP because it means I don't have to think of all the questions anymore. <laughs> You guys uh, bring all the questions to the VIP. We're certainly going to talk anime uh, during VIP. So if it's burning in your heart, uh, come to VIP, and then we'll get all those questions yeah. out. You guys enjoy your break. I will see you in about 27 minutes. And, and if you have not requested your access to the private Facebook group, Color World 
live VIP only, please do. And then we'll double check that to make sure that you grabbed a VIP item from one of our guests. And then we'll let you in and we'll have a freaking great time. So thank you everybody for all the fairy tale fans out there. That's the most important thing I could say. It communicates everything. Thanks. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank Bye. Thanks, guys.